TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like and comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right behind me, this is the Twitch, just in case you need to, you know, go back and replay the live if we go live and you miss it. Uh, we also got Patreon, we post Monday through Friday. Uh, and we got merch, the link to all of that down in the description. This is Police Interceptors. I don't know what season, don't know what episode, so let's just get into it. Police good, Interceptors good have teamed up with Nottinghamshire's finest. Brand new force, same old story. Last year, the county's crime figures rose by almost 11,000 incidents. Life for an interceptor is far from dull. Working in Nottinghamshire is brilliant. I think I'd describe... Are you kidding me? Lisa is a focal point in every episode lately. All right. All right, Lisa. I'm not even going to say nothing early. Let's just... It has a policeman's playground. Like any big city within the UK, it's densely populated. There's lots going on. Gangs and drugs, burglary, vehicle theft, robbery. <coughs> but also, we've got some major road networks that run through the county, which travelling criminals use to commit crime in and out of Nottinghamshire. There's, there's always something to be hunting or looking for. Sounds fun there. Honestly. It's Saturday evening, and Interceptors Dan Machin and James Carrington are on the lookout for a car that was reported stolen this morning. Sind Hill Road, south westbound, a Peugeot 207, stolen from Lowell's Ray in Limby by means of burglary. Car theft has been on the rise in Nottinghamshire, and the Interceptors are proactively targeting cars that are being shipped across county lines. The brand new network of ANPR cameras lets them know where the stolen Peugeot passes and which way it's heading. It's just, I don't even see the point of stealing the car out there. Like you on false plates, you got you got stolen plates, you got out of date plates. That ANPR done a camera that mark where we are in this direction. Keep your eyes peeled. Units are flooding the area. For five two, we're going after the Peugeot as well. It's only a matter of minutes before the car is spotted. Here we go. Right, right again. It's just been followed by an RV down towards the 610. The, RA. the car's heading for the M1. Dan and James are still a few miles away from its last location, so they need to get busy. Next round, Dan. Dan unleashes the BMW's X5's 330 horses and steers them towards the M1. Oh man, yeah, oh yeah, he's definitely driving this X5. This way southbound. Go on. I've not seen him squeeze through there. Nottingham interceptors keep a large stable of thoroughbred pursuit cars. Marked BMW X5s are equipped with gun safes, ready for firearms teams to deploy at a moment's notice. So, so, uh, so they went back to season one and started doing a coverage of the cars again? Yeah. The dog units respond to calls in the 150 mile per hour Skoda VRS wagon. While traffic units use both unmarked BMW X5s and 3 Series estates to keep a stealthy eye on the county's motorists. Dan and James have threaded their X5 through the evening traffic and closed the gap on the pursuit. 5-3, we're just in combat. I hope all of y'all are paying attention to what cars they're driving now, because they just gave you a rundown. Why with those call signs, 10 seconds, we're with you. We're with them now. Up ahead, an unmarked X5 and a marked patrol car are tailing the stolen Persia. To Three series X5 stolen. Vehicles with you now. The stolen 207 is showing no signs of slowing. The interceptors need to force the runaway's hand. They're going to try and do the get by in lane one. Get by, try lane one. Doing it now. 
playing cars going underneath. Oh, okay, okay. Right, stand by, stand by. So There's a junction front. up ahead. James needs to keep the pursuit on the motorway. Try and keep him on. Staff is near side. The M1 might be busy, but it's much safer than built up residential. Well, they're probably in there on Snapchat talking about lad this, lad that. Streets. He's going to get it off, mate. Try and keep him on. Just try and, try and keep him on. Go on. Just stay alongside him. Keep him on. Keep him on. Sound. They've shut the door, but the runaway driver is swerving erratically from lane to lane, and judging by the state of the Peugeot's rear bumper, he's not afraid to get physical. The bumper is holding on by a thread, and literally... James says he likes to chill out to mellow tunes when he's behind the wheel. So this driver recklessly swerving at 100 miles an hour will be totally blowing his cool. Yes, yes, from 5-3, we are pursued. Vehicle is lights off, swerving across all lanes, medium risk, lane four, one zero zero, lane four. How's it medium risk? Is it medium risk because it's low traffic? The runaway knows he can't outrun three intercept units. He's hoping his erratic driving will force them to call off the pursuit. This vehicle is at least three up. We are in lane three now. We are at medium risk. He's swerving across all lanes. Nine zero. Taking the lane four or lane one, we need to get by. Prop pursuit, he is lane three, swerving in front of us at one zero zero. There's another junction rapidly approaching. James positions the units for another blocking maneuver. To the lead X5, get so near side, back. don't want him coming off the motorway. To an H, he's swerving across all lanes, he's to our near side now. We are at eight five. It's over, buddy. You picked the wrong time of night to do this. You know why I say that? Because there's low, there's not a lot of cars out. If there were more cars out, they would have probably called it back. Dan carefully draws the two-ton X5 alongside the speeding hack. <coughs> Runaways rapidly running out of options. He's in lane three to the lead X5, watching near side. We want him on when he kept on. Half mile marker board for the A50 24 Alpha. Stand by, stand by. Contact with the subject vehicle. He's taking extensive damage. He's going to crash to the near side. Stand by, stand by. The pursuit may have ended. Is it game over for the runaway? Was that an accident? Or was that like tactical contact that they be talking about? Way driver. Look like an accident. Interceptors James and Dan are on the M1 in pursuit of a stolen Persia. To pursuit, there are three T Pack vehicles with you now. The runaway was trying to bully the police drivers into backing down. Did not work. Pursuit is lane three, swerving in front of us. Drivers into backing down. Bro, what are you doing? You're on a donut. First of all, you could the max speed for a donut is what, 40 miles an hour? Like, what are you doing? You were never, ever going to get away on this. Like, the, the plan was flawed from the beginning. Prop pursuit, he is lane three, swerving in front of us at 1-0-0. Zero, zero. Traffic on the motorway remains light. Was his reckless driving saw the 100 mile an hour pursuit come to an abrupt end. Yeah, that's an accident. Stand by, stand by. Contact with the subject vehicle. It's taking extent. First tire to come off was that donut. You see it? See if damage. It's going to crash to the near side. Stand by, stand by. In an act of sheer desperation, yep, the driver of the stolen Peugeot off. went for a gap that simply wasn't there. It's going to crash to the near side. Stand by, stand by. Two of the lads have made off into the bushes with Dan and James hot on their heels. Jim, go! One of the lads wasn't so quick to get away. Police officer! That dog out there. One down, but the driver and passenger are still on the run. They've gone through here up to this point. We've come through. I've got a shout of police dog, and I've pretty much stopped here. Dogs come through, and they're gone. 
Where the dog though? Units are searching the area, but James isn't hopeful. Well, they've probably got phones on them, they? they've probably contacted someone to come and pick them up. I'm gutted. But one out of three, who knows? Can I see what state the police have got? <laughs> they decamped, they got up out of there. Low key, the one that stayed back, he wasn't the driver, they're gonna let him go. Oh, didn't we? The X5 has picked up a battle scar, and so is James's finger. I smashed my hand to pieces, I think. Need to pull, need to pull my finger off on the, uh, on the fence. The southbound lane of the M1 has been closed for 30 minutes. These lads, when they get in these stolen cars, they just don't care. We've got to think about the risk, members of the public, but as you've just seen, they do not care. They'll weave around the motorway at 100 mile an hour trying to crash... Is that a yo-yo? What is that? ...into police cars. They've totaled this person's car. They don't care. Could be worse, couldn't it? Could have no finger. As the cuffed passenger is taken back to the Nick, it seems his mates are long <coughs> gone. Yeah, they out of there, buddy. Forget about it. Them was the fastest dudes I ever seen. This is like, this is like, I never seen nobody get away, I don't think. On foot, at the high speed chase, then they get to running, never seen to get away. That's the first. The M1 is underway again, but the stolen Peugeot won't be going anywhere. You've got that in comparison to that. I think we've got off lightly. Because it went with a massive bang. It proper walloped the police car. I thought it'd be a lot worse than that. Mate, it was proper giving it the full swerve of McGurva. Yeah. That's as new. Hey? Fear wear and tear, this. <laughs> German engineering, my friend. Yes. Come on. A bit of a pattern. I don't think this is the proper time to be doing this uh, here like this right now. But with their mate in custody. Sit out, chopper. The net is closing in. Oh, they still searching for him. Two days have passed since Dan and James's high speed encounter with the stolen Peugeot and the pair are back on patrol. Right. I just want to say a quick side note. Note it's not her fault, but Lisa was nowhere to be found in this, in that, in any of that. I don't even know why they showed her in the beginning. A call has just come through about another car theft. Yeah, there's been a been a series of car key burglaries in West Bridgeford. There's some decent high value cars nicked. Our burglars have had two cars from one address, an Audi and a Beamer. They've abandoned the Audi, left in the BMW, and then gone and done another car key break and nicked a brand new 19 plate Golf GTI. That's been tracked by the owner. The car's been found. Local policing colleagues have stopped a group of young lads not a million miles from where the GTI has been uh, sort of abandoned. And funnily enough, one of them is a lad that's all over our briefings for doing car key burglaries. And there were two lads outstanding from the pursuit we had down the motorway the other day. They just break in, take the keys and, uh, and get going? some money on it being one and the same. That's a stupid charge to catch. Let's man. have a look, shall we? Now you got burglary and you got auto theft. Officers have already arrested two lads and the evidence suggests they're linked to the stolen Volkswagen. He's got the Golf GTI key sure. in his pocket. I bet that's the driver of the Peugeot from the motorway. The lad in the back of the police car looks very familiar. We had the pursuit down the motorway the other day in the 207. Um, obviously they got away. Classic car key burglars. And I'd have my mortgage on the fact that's the driver of the Peugeot that night out doing some more car key breaks. Let's go, Martin, not bad. The lad has decided he's not going to come quietly. He's kicking off in the back of the patrol car. Oh, mate, it's some leg restraints on oh. <laughs> In these situations, leg restraints are needed to protect both the officers and the suspect. Yeah, we'll have him. We'll have him. A gesture that this lad doesn't appear to appreciate. Do you spit at me, mate? You spit at me? I'm not an animal. Stop behaving like one then. More accustomed to the driving seats of luxury German sports cars, Mr. Gobby isn't happy about riding in the back of a patrol van. Get! Mate, st oh. Stop burning people's hands. You have this problem, oh. would you? You big. All of you are big. The two, yeah? All of you. 
Hey, you're on, oh, you. you're on the case of a car who was stolen in the burger. He over mad. He caught. <laughs> you're going to get caught eventually doing this, man. Ain't, no, ain't nobody undefeated at this. No way. Your pocket. You. No. You ugly bastards. If flattery will get you everywhere, this little charmer's going nowhere. nowhere. Except Good one. Sells. Mongols, what are you clearly just gone and done? What's Nick's that? a burger, mate. We've nicked a burger, is what we've done. What? We've nicked a burger that's kicking off. Get off my shoes. Shut the door. Take me to bridal, you ugly bastard. James has had enough of this jovial banter for one night. I'm already on the run for. Oh, oh, he's a delight. You're making friends. Apparently, he's done nothing wrong. Apart from the fact he's got keys from a stolen car in his pocket. Yeah. Along with the car keys, the lads were also found with this fetching lady's purse, a pair of mole grips, complete with a lock that appears to be missing a door. Yeah, buddy, y'all out here. Y'all got caught red-handed oh, with paraphernalia. The stolen golf had been abandoned half a mile down the road from where the lads were picked up. Beautiful car, isn't it? They still got some burgling kit in there, haven't they? It is nice, this car. Sadly, the hot hack <coughs> hasn't survived the ordeal unscathed. That is from the roof of the car, isn't it? Yeah. And that, I reckon they ripped it out looking for, like, the tracking box. You have a look, it's all ripped out. Oh, yeah, the red white mess of it. See the red S SOS button? Yeah. That's going to GPS the car, isn't it? So they've nicked it. Yeah. Just dangerous, dangerous criminals, and it's a, just a top result for everyone to get them locked up and get them uh, both looking at some prison time. So, like, what, like... When they take the car, are they taking it to body shops to get money, or are they just taking them for fun? Like, if this ain't about no money, then what are you doing? <laughs> so, yeah, happy days. The Silver Tongue lad was found guilty of burglary. He received Five 18 years. months behind oh, bars 18. and a three-year criminal behavior order. His mate got two years behind bars for burglary. No further action was taken against the passenger. Told you that one passenger got away. With over 800 knife crimes reported in Nottinghamshire last year, the interceptors have actioned a specialist team to tackle this modern day menace head on. Out on patrol today are Sergeant Steve King and Ken Tinley. Ooh. Knife carriers generally Never met carry these gentlemen. the knife because they're involved in something else, maybe part of organized crime groups or gangs. And we try and deal with those issues as well. So for example, if someone who's involved in drug supply, we'll target them. And if you get them for a drug supply, then hopefully that'll prevent them from carrying a knife in the future as well, really. It doesn't, that's a great way of thinking. <laughs> Steve's a big Jason Bourne fan and his favorite movie star is Matt Damon. But that ain't well, how I work. he's just spotted two more celebrities but this pair are stars of the morning briefing. Two males. We'll go for a stop. All right. That bus? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Yeah, all right, good. You jumping down ready? Yeah. You know what? Yeah, you know what's happening? Yeah. Well, if you do, Steve and Ken just want a quiet word. But the lads leap straight on the defensive. Are we, being, are we being detained? Yes, you are being for, detained. For what? For what? For what crime? Under the Misuse of Drugs Act, you're being detained. Misuse whilst I, why I establish whether or not we're going to be conducting a search, I can't misuse do that. Drugs act. Well, I can't do that if, you're, if I allow you to walk off. Your your behaviour yeah, is erratic. There's yeah, intelligence linking do? you to the supply of control do? drug in this do? area. Therefore, you're do? both being searched. I've just told you. Okay. So you, you do understand that? Just pop your hands but, but, out of your no, pocket, no, dude. No, 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 I don't no, understand no, no. that. No, you can't arrest me. Let me explain, me. It, to Listen, you, boss. Then, mate. Let me explain it to you then, mate. Boss, you can't, no, you can't, can't, you can't, can't just start arresting me for what? Out, for, what? Yeah. for what? You're not arrested, you're being detained. No, I'm, I'm being detained for what, though? That's what the law in the UK is, is wild a little bit. They got briefed in the morning about them, stop them immediately. They don't know the law. They, they, they talking like they lawyers or something. Like, bro, sit down, man. Y'all making this long. For what the backup has arrived and not a moment too soon. I'll explain it to you. No, 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 no. Not for all, man. You're all loud up, man. Don't kick off, don't kick off, though. Don't kick off. No. Steve and Ken are satisfied that neither lad is carrying a knife. But they're both resisting the search, so the cuffs are coming out. Okay, there's active intelligence linking you to the supply drugs in this area. There's also a smell of cannabis emanating from you and smoking cannabis. Are you taking something today? Because your, your, your eyes are like pinpricks, mate. 
What up? It doesn't matter. You sweat, you, 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 you put it on them. You put it in your mouth. Go on then, do your thing. Do your thing here. Go up on my bag. Do your thing. Do your little. I will do. I'll do your thing. Just be around for me. Just face my colleague. It's touching me. Stop winging, Jen. Brother, it's touching me. Who is this? Yeah, no. This dude, whoever this dude is, he needs his own YouTube channel. This dude, he is hilarious. Voice alone. You got something down your pants? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean, got something down my crotch? Get your hands out. Get your hands out. Nothing down my crotch. You can't touch me. Knob. <laughs> Bro, look, it's my Shut knob. Up, you know, get my cock out. Let's get it out. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Show him that. Come, this loud mouth lad is adamant that he's got nothing to hide. No. But the game's up for his mate. Go on, So you got some cannabis down your pants, yeah? What? There's some cannabis down your pants. I it's can see smell, it. I can, I can smell it. I can see it. Is that all that's down there? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just have to wait because it's quite far down. No. How old are you? The clock no. like How old are you? 17. Is there anything else down there? Yeah. Just the weed? Yeah. You know what this is? This is harassment, isn't it? No, it's not harassment, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. I haven't got nothing. Go down my boxes! I'm not going down your boxes. I'm going around your waist. I'm going around your waistband. Waist. Right. What can you get? You know what? I actually haven't got nothing on me, but you know, you can't go on like this. Well, How it I appears you've got something to stuff down your pants, I mate. I haven't, so. Ken's made another discovery. These not-so-smartphones are often used by drug... Well, they got the Nokia's. What is them? What is that? Alba? Albanians got their own track phone now? Dealers to do business without being traced. So what concerns me is you've got two Bernard style Waymo phones that you're saying aren't yours. You've been quite quick to declare they're not yours. I've had phones broke at home and the other one's my mate's phone. I just phoned my mum on it. Like, what's your problem? Okay. The lad reckons he borrowed the mobile to phone his mum. Yeah, There's at least yeah, some cannabis yeah, down your yeah. pants. Oh my so God, you're probably going to be detained for a full strip search and we'll need to get an appropriate adult. Well, she's about to get another call. Who is your guardian or who looks after you? Does he got a ponytail? Where does she live? Not my house. Oh, okay. what's your, where's your housemate? I'm sure all of these have been here enough times. Oh, I'm just asking, I've never met you before. Is she in? Because he's under 18 and he can't be strip searched without his legal guardian. We're quite determined when we've got the grounds, we'll, we'll take people back and strip them. If, uh, if they want to hide drugs in their underwear, then that's ultimately what we're going to have to do. At the Back the at day. the Nick, Motormouth has run out of puff. Why the police station all blue? What town is this? Pop out, dude, you're right. All right, boss. Calm down now a bit, yeah? I've calmed down. Good man. <laughs> he's fiercely denied that he's hiding drugs. All right, we have to check, dude, because you have got something down there, haven't you? Yeah, but I haven't, no, that's what I'm trying to say. A strip search will allow him to prove his innocence once and for all. All right, just pull your trousers down, but keep your boxes on. All right, now spin around for me and just duck down. This lad's got some Class A in his pants. Oh. Steve has pulled out a plastic bag that appears to contain Class A drugs. I don't know where else. <coughs> Is that brown? Well, it was in your pants, mate. You can't really see it. It just looked like wraps to me. Amazingly, the lad claims he has no idea how the drugs appeared between his legs. He's got some cash stuffed down his pants, about 170 quid, and then uh, three or four wraps of dark substance, which is expected to be heroin. Mm. Um, he maybe doesn't know how we've ended up down his pants. Um, so we're just going to search the other lad, see what we've got with him, and then we'll make a decision about where we go with it from there. It's time for the second lad no to strip off in front of Mum. In front At any of point, should he be fully made? In front of mom, you said? Meet out in front of mom? Naked. So we'll do probably the top half first. Um, put that back on, then do the bottom half. Is that OK? Yeah, absolutely. OK, chuck that back on for me, mate. The strip search revealed the lad did have cannabis hidden down his pants. That's it? So both have been arrested for possession with intent to support. Hold on. We just did all that for this? You can't even put this in a little joint. They might as well, they should have just... And his pants. So both have been arrested for possession with intent. W waste of time. And supply they control time. drugs. Hopefully it's been seen today, the sorts of proactive work we've been doing in the community that should make feel, people feel a bit more comfortable, a bit more confident about the policing uh, operations that are taking place. And hopefully it, uh, it sends a message to these two and maybe the wider criminality that might be taking place within, uh, within Clifton that 
and we are looking for you and we will stop you, we will search you and we'll, we'll make arrests where the, uh, where the evidence is there. Both lads were arrested for possession with intent to supply Class A drugs and possession of cannabis. They're both still under investigation. I'm not gonna lie, this dude was hilarious. Uh, he was good. He was great comedy. Investigation. Private straight the Nottinghamshire's <coughs> neighborhood <coughs> policing Excuse teams me. are the interceptors' eyes and ears on the ground. They have supplied vital intel on the location of a man believed to be involved in organized crime. And today, the neighborhood units are revving up for a raid alongside the tactical support group. Heading up the op is Sergeant Brian Blackmore. We're, we're just on a issue of drugs warrant with NSUs. They don't want anyone slipping out the back door, so they're surrounding the property. They're dropped off. The warehouse has been converted into artists' studios. We're going through there. Let's get that door uh, smashed through. Well, the interceptors are hoping to find more than a pile of paintbrushes. Red key. The warehouse is a rabbit warren of rooms and corridors. This one's locked. Gotta move quick. Just stand by, Pete. The team have found someone. It's all hands on deck. Results. They've got their man. Well, what did they catch him? The only thing Sleeping Beauty here is going to be wearing right now is a shiny pair of handcuffs. A quick scan of the building has delivered three more suspects. They've all been arrested and are headed off to the local Nick. And caught with what, though? The warehouse is cluttered and full of hiding places. Right, has got it. I've got to say it's one of the most complex because of the layout, because it's an original building and they've created little studios and rooms oh. within what wouldn't have been there in the first place. Sergeant Mark Southgate from the neighbourhood unit is heading up the search party. It's going to be got all that, quite all substantial amounts of what appears to be Class A controlled drugs in the premises. Like a substantial block there on top of the scales. Oh, okay. A block of uh, off-white substance on the floor there. The other individual wraps. Oh, okay. Yeah, Quantity they got you buddy. Numerous mobile phones. It's a good, a good hit today. Good result. Yeah, to speed so up the right. search, a police dog has been drafted in to sweep the building. Baxter has been trained to sniff well, out heroin, one dog? cocaine and cannabis. Sorry. So give us an indication on the box and we've got uh, a reasonable amount of cannabis in there. This big bag of weed they would fetch a equally large chat, price trap, on the street. Trap. The bad news for the dealer is it's headed straight for the police incinerator. And Baxter isn't the only one sniffing out a monster haul. Oh. Looks like it's a kilo block of uncut cocaine. Oh, in itself. God, they didn't find a kilo. They didn't count a kilo raw. That's tough. It's probably it's over. Worth twenty-five to forty thousand, but once it's cut down into deals of street value, is probably upwards of hundred thousand pounds. Yeah. So that's a really good find. It's going to really hit them hard where it hurts in the pocket. A good result. You this have somebody raid has hunting. delivered the organised crime unholy trinity. It's quite a good one. It's quite a good one, yeah. Guns, money, and drugs. Everywhere you go. For Brian's team, the raid was well worth the early morning wake up. We've got in excess of a kilo of. And then they had it everywhere. Like you, even if like. Even if like you were onto them, there's, there's nowhere you could stash that all. You would have to go find it, collect it, move it around, like. Okay, in one big block package. Also, we found different quantities of, again, cocaine in bundles. Some were on the scales. There was mobile phones attached or linked to it. Quantity of cash just in that room alone. Six people were arrested in today's operation. 
including their main target. He has a previous history in organised crime in Nottingham area, links to uh, groups that have been involved in quite serious offences within Nottingham, firearms offences. Um, so it's a, it's a big result for us to locate him here, where he is actually in the room where the drugs are. We can actually tie him to that. They didn't just tie him to it, they put him behind bars. When Sleeping Beauty had his day in court, he was convicted of possession with intent to supply cocaine and received a seven-year custodial sentence. The Interceptor's relentless mission to bring peace and order to the nation's streets is a vital task, but often a thankless one. Not everyone's going to like us, I get that. I used to get wound up a lot when they used to, like, call you all sorts, and then I got past that. But I think sometimes... Lisa. Oh, my God. I need to see some throwback footage of Lisa because, like, I honestly, you work hard at some point. You just don't work hard now. Sometimes it's hard, especially when you're a new officer and you're not used to... Oh, you're driving. Getting abused. Okay. And then I think after a while, you learn to ignore it because you know that they're saying it to get a rise. The minute they know that they've got you, that is it, they'll carry on. But we must be one of the few jobs where you go to work and you get abused and it's normal. It's the early hours and Sergeant James Carrington and Katie Eustace are on patrol in the BMW X5. Here go Katie. They've had a call to say there are five males all... Y'all remember Katie? Katie be ready for the action. She be ready for the negativity at work. Dressed in dark clothing with torches, go down an alleyway between a couple of properties. The X5's <coughs> three straight six and state-of-the-art four-wheel drive system allow the interceptors to respond to the call with blistering pace. Have we got any more specific description on the alleyway they've gone down? Hold on. There's a bloke just popped his head out over there. Which one? That one just there. Go and have a look. Never pop poke. your hair out. Do Katie you? says she joined the force because she didn't want to be stuck in an office all day. I doubt she had disappearing down dark alleys at the top of her wish list either. Hold on, I'm about to be a massive factory in two taxes. There's trouble brewing down the road. You quiet, you quiet. These narrow streets only allow one car to pass at a time, and a pair of drivers are locked in a nose-to-nose -nose standoff. One of you needs to grow up, don't they? Move out of the way. <laughs> Katie. The OC, I think she's got embroiled in some kind of road rage incident on the street that's unrelated at the same time. What's up? What's up is the back of a seriously annoyed taxi driver. He's using Pakistan and Pakistani language. He's being abusive. Right. He's, yeah, he's, he's speaking yeah, yeah. like racist. Unwilling to stare down an interceptor, the other driver backs down. Gotta love it. You gotta love. I'm not gonna lie. Katie looks like she can bake the greatest pumpkin spice sugar cookies that we've probably ever seen. Maybe what? What? Ginger nutmeg. She probably make a great cuppa. You know? Crisis averted, James leaves the comfort of the X5 and joins Katie in the hunt for the suspicious men. No joy. Nothing obvious, but there's cameras all over it. There's not more shouting going on. Right? It sounds like the dueling motorists are back. Hold on. There's going to be a horrible nasty Again? fight. We need to move. Clocking the incoming interceptors, the driver of the second car isn't hanging around. Is it him doing all the shouting? Yeah. Taxi driver, she's trying to do this. Yeah, and The two-ton Beamer makes light work of the tight, speed bump-filled streets, but there's a problem. Last them. The runaway is also in an X5. Mm. Left. But the police spec BMW has a high performance upgrade. A pair of interceptors. Next right, next right. That was mad corny. Right, right, right. The runaway is recklessly racing through built up residential streets. Ah. Down here and right. They'll be out on the boulevard. 
Katie knows these roads like the back of her hand. I've got the car now. Bingo. Are you home? Yes, yeah. Right, fellas, what's your problem? Sorry. Nothing, officer, what's up? Because <laughs> you've had a right Barney with that taxi driver. Why, why have you guys behaved as you have? Hmm? Who's that? These three lads appear. Why is he doing whippets, right? What is those called when you fill up the balloon with nitrous and do it? That's, they call whippets, right? Why is he doing it right in front of the cop? Sir, you are pulled over. Try to hide this. Here to be heading to a party. So any of you insured to drive this car? No, none of us. Who was driving it then? He's got off. Has he? No, because if you don't come back, we're going to be seizing the car. The driver's seat is empty. He could have made off or... He could have just swapped seats. Where's the lad that was driving He's this car? He's one of his bird's asses, I don't know. Right, we need to fetch him back, otherwise, because none of you is insured to drive it, we're going to be taking his car. No, so you might... Oh, they the the claim the driver has gone off to uh, service his girlfriend. His mate's just told him... The car is parked, though, in a legally parked spot. Either he's not going to come out. We suspect either they're not insured or something's not right with his driving licence. So we're going to be seizing oh, the car. The camera. Oh. So is it was it that belongs to the car? That's what the plate says, or am I guessing? Yes, that's correct. No. So are the cops just oblivious to what they're doing with the balloons? Probably. Probably. When is he coming back then to speak to us? As soon as he busted the load. <laughs> Katie and James don't care what he's doing. If he's not back in five minutes, he's losing his wheels. He's got his ring in him. He's there. Give him a second, minute, mate. Right. Well, I'm giving the car opinion. stinks of booze, but alcohol isn't the only stimulant on tonight's menu. Are you enjoying that balloon? Is there something in there that's that's nice yeah, for you? Yeah, of course it is. Well, well, nitrous waste. oxide. And... Lovely. Nitrous oxide is the gas used to anaesthetise people in operating theatres. But isn't that illegal in the UK? It is. It's also a very popular but potentially harmful recreational drug. Definitely kills brain cells when done like this. Inhaled from a kiddie's balloon, it's legal to use, but not if you're driving. Yeah. We suspect that the driver's had a load of that nitrous oxide, <laughs> which would be why he's done one and not wants to come back, because it comes under that psychoactive substance stuff. So that would be why he doesn't want to come and talk to us right now. Might have had a nice night with his missus, but lost his car. With Romeo nowhere to be seen, Katie decides enough is enough. Time's up. It's being recovered. It's been five minutes. Yeah. yeah at 5:29. Yes, it has. No, no, has it? it's been Stop supping your nitrous oxide, and you know what time it is, <laughs> won't you? Come on, Believe it's a chap called. Don't, don't call me babes. babes. I'm not your babes, am I? No, listen, you're listen. not. You're far from me. Listen. Uh, he's exactly. he's Dang. <laughs> With the tow truck on its way, moving the X5 won't be a problem. On the floor, not us. But shifting this bunch of charmers could be. We're gonna finish their whole balloons in front of the police. That's a little bit wild, in my opinion. You're gonna see the rivers, in it? Well, the recovery, recovery wagon's not gonna take the car you lot in it, is it? Some more tie shit on you. Try to get one of the cars to come down. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's the cars uh, start coming towards us. I'm seeing this car. Yeah, yeah but if we seize the car under Section 165 of the Road Traffic Act, there can't be people in it, which means we have a power to move people from the vehicle to seize the vehicle. Seizing me as well. Mate, don't act like a five year old boy. I'm not a five year old Don't be stupid. Boy. Well, don't act like one then. I'm not acting like one. Right, well, let's you not are, be stupid. Uh, what I'm telling you is. <laughs> you're going to sit in a car and go to a duty, police duty garage sat in a recovered car. I am not getting out of the car. Right, well, how are we going to recover it then? Are you in it? Well, it is what it is. It is what it is. Katie and James know the ideal solution for removing stubborn objects. Hello, boys. Apply just the right amount of muscle. Why are they faces? And if that doesn't work, the tow truck usually has the desired effect. Socks and sliders, classic. Psychotic drug. Made for whipped cream. Psychotic. Blowing it up in front of them as well? You wouldn't believe it, would you? Yeah. Psychotic. Yeah. Really? Good job, Little Wardens aren't here, innit? The lads are now worried about the car. The windows are open, it's raining, and the interior is going to get trashed. So if the car was to get damaged, what, who's going to be liable for it? 
He's not come back to put the windows up yeah, with the keys, has he? You took it. It's his fault, though, yeah, isn't it? You took it. No, he ain't. No way. If you, if you can get the key off him, but he great, we can put the windows up. He's too busy. He's having a good time. I'll, I'll put it again, Joe. You should. But, as if by magic... Hey, the windows are up. Someone somewhere has got the key to this car. But now it's locked, they can't take it out of gear, so it will have to be dragged onto the truck, potentially damaging the... <sighs> tires and that's a w you can roll up the window for the x5 without me in there the gearbox we have tried to explain to them that if it gets dragged on it might take some damage with a key it won't they're not interested they're not going to be fooled by you it sure makes pride and joy the party's over for this rain-soaked trio interesting bunch of lads weren't they to yeah. be animated is he got sandals on with socks? I think we'll yeah, the best entertaining. Them. At the end of the day, the driver's not come back, so we suspect he's either under the influence or something. We've got him off the street for the night at least, bearing in mind he's probably under the influence of something, because yeah. they stink of booze as well. So whether it be the recreational gases they're uh, enjoying yeah, or off. some booze as well, who knows? But You don't want him driving around in that no, state. the way he was driving through the estate, and if he's in that state, it's best we have him and his car off the road. So ultimately, this is a result. It couldn't be proved that Romeo was behind the wheel, so no further action was taken. However, he did pay the recovery fee and collected his true love. Obviously, they was going to pay that recovery fee. Ain't no way they're going to leave that in there. It's the midweek night shift in Mansfield, and interceptors Clarky and Phil are heading out on patrol. Well, yeah, it's damp tonight, the roads are wet, uh, but visibility is not too bad. Obviously, we'll drive to the conditions. Uh, the point is that everything that we do has got to be safe. I think we'll be in good hands with Phil at the wheel. I hope. Feel the beak and the nose, whatever. Oh, it's head, the pair spotted driver, who appears to be in a bit of a hurry. He's just going quick, isn't he? He is. He's crashed. Losing it on the bend, the Nissan has flattened a metal fence. Oh, immediately crashed. He turned the corner and lost it. Slid everywhere. Remarkably, the driver's straight out of the car and making tracks. Stay where you are! Please, stay where you are! Hurry up! But Clarky and Phil are right behind him. Well, you're you're behind, back. Back. You're you're back. Back. behind your back. Behind your back. He tried to run. He too big. Now the interceptors yeah. need to get to the bottom of why the car ended up like this you polish yes so clarky breaks out his best polish you extra mash not bad not bad okay amateur thespian clarky picked up his impressive command of polish during a week-long touring production of macbeth <laughs> you're walking around phil hang on, Go on. the driver may not have blood on his hands but he does have booze on his breath you been drinking? Yes. Yes. Spiritos. Some vodka. Vodka, yeah? Okay. Come on. Sit in there. Mind your head. I thought he'd take the bed pretty quick. I, I thought, how's he got round there? And that's the answer. He hasn't. I am dickhead. Well, <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. I am dickhead. Twice. When was your last drink tonight? I would have about an hour ago, okay? Hey! Yes? Do you know what, what is most shit in this situation? What's that? My good friend, yeah. not drinking, Yeah. offered me... To give you a lift? There's no time Always for what ifs. Right it's on, time man. to put him to the test. Do you know what I am? Okay, well... In the head. Big shit. Oh. Will you give me a breath sample? No. I've been drunk. I've yes. been driving. Yeah. Yeah, put in my breath. Okay, thank you. Nice deep breath. <laughs> if you, take my you blow into there, nice tight seal, blow into there. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop there, stop there. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Thank you. The driver might wish he'd accepted that lift. The results are in. So the legal limit is 35.
My bad, it was muted. I said, I said, what are our guests right now? I said, I'm guessing he's .9 or better, three times over the limit. For him to take that type of bend and crash, he got to be, got to be nine, three times over. Okay, you've blown 88. 88. 88, yeah, so you failed the test, so I'm now arresting you on suspicion of driving whilst, okay, listen to me, listen to me. I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving whilst over the prescribed alcohol limit. Do you understand that? I'm working with you. Okay, you are. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the police station, we're going to put you on an evidential breath test machine, and we'll see what the reason is there, and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Matthew. Just have to shut this door, okay? <coughs> Thank you. You're going to jail, buddy. At over twice the legal limit, statistically, he was at least 30 times more likely to crash than a driver who hadn't touched a drop. Look at this devastation. You know, he's completely driven at speed. Lost it he on the bend, the straight car. through. There could have been a pedestrian, a cyclist, and could have killed somebody. It's crazy. If you want to avoid this, don't drink and drive. Facts. It's simple. I agree. It's my first mistake. We don't do drink and drive. You man. have to learn from this. Don't ever drink drive again. Back at the Nick. Mind your head. He seems all very right. apologetic. Books in Nottingham's happiest prisoner. Come with me. We'll go and do the machine. Okay, all right. Thanks, Hodge. Cheers. Thank you. And escorts him to their state of the art breath test suite. So, if you want to take a seat, if you sit down there for me, please. He's just big and bulky and awkward. Very, very calm. Good. You accept it. I understand that. You've said that, yeah. Take a nice deep breath and blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep the driver blew 88 on the roadside test. Going. Stop there. Thank you. The legal limit is 35. Right, 86 and 83. We take the lower reading, so we'll take 83. So we'll take you back to the custody side. <coughs> All right, mate. Bless you. You know what I mean, yeah? yeah? If only every drink driver was as easy going as this fellow. Take care. Oh, and they're right. having a good time. Yeah, no problem, you take care, all right? All right, see you later. See you, bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you very much. I know I make mistake. I'm sorry. No, that's right. Main thing is, you won't do it again. That's the good thing. No. The thing is, you serve me like yeah. that. All right, mate. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. See you. Cheers. Let's drive you. It will come as no surprise that the driver pleaded guilty to drink driving and he also had no insurance. He was probably less happy when he received fines totaling £470 he tried to and was run. disqualified for 20 months. No kizzy, that boy tried to get up out of there. I, um, I thought he was going for it when we first started, you know. I thought he was up for a scrap, you know, when he first... Yeah, well, he, as I was going when to he turned and faced run, up. And, and then he I was scared for your life. stopped and faced me up yeah. and turned. I thought, here we go. I think he just wanted to give you a hug. Yeah, he's coming up. Well, <laughs> most people do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Police interceptors. It's never a dull moment. Tell her, leave a like, comment. I'm gone.